better to stand out from the crowd as a go-to expert in your field. Each week, Rich Montrager interviews top leaders, influencers, authors, speakers, podcasters, and media professionals about how to leverage media best to help you shine brighter on camera and stage as a go-to expert. Now, here's your host, The Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back to How the Rock to Stage Live. A dramatic drum roll for late appearances, but technical difficulties do happen in this business. It's part of learning how to gain composure and stay composed. In fact, that was my 2 p.m. live today, talking about maintaining media composure when things don't go right. That happened tonight, but we're live. We're streaming. We're back with here on multiple channels once again. Seven o'clock Eastern time, we go live every Wednesday night for How the Rock to Stage show, but we do need to thank some sponsors to make it all possible because every week we get together and we highlight amazing expert speakers, influencers. And tonight, one of my favorite topics, we're going to be talking about voiceover and how to leverage your voice in amazing ways with a true professional in this field. So we do need to thank our sponsors and the national speakers association celebrating 50 years of the NSA. In fact, my guests and I are both members of the NSA proud members of that. And Congratulations, the NSA helping to elevate speakers and grow speakers for over 50 years, and they are going strong. Also, we do want to thank Adavita Studios, and Adavita Studios is powering how to rock the stage. Adavita has an experienced team paired with a state of the art remote recording process, which brings your message to market even faster. They work with you to produce your audiobooks, your podcast series, and distribute it to the larger market. And for more information, learn about Adavita and what they can do for you. Go to autobeta.com. Well, tonight we are going to get into learning about optimizing your speaking voice. And that can take you in a lot of different directions once you get into the media business. It's audio novels. It's voiceovers. It's so many different areas now that once you learn to control your voice and build your voice, you can do amazing things. And tonight we have a real rock star in that area. Hillary Blair is obsessed with communication presence, story, and the sharing of the voice. She works with ex ex extensively across the business world, guiding and challenging the enthusiastic and the reluctant to share their voice while communicating even more powerfully. Hillary and her team have been working with clients and the corporate and the professional world for a long time. Clients include the Rasha, Marzek, and Maxar, and ACLU, and M.D. Anderson. Hillary is a professional voiceover and stage actor who has been teaching for 35 years. You can hear her on many training videos and webinars, like the Nintendo Games, narrating the planetarium film at the Museum of Nature and Science in Denver, Colorado, and her recent TEDx talk. She holds a B.A. from the Yale University and an M.F.A. from the National Theater Conservatory. She once worked on a sheep ranch in Montana, and she binge watches Netflix. All right, let's get into the business now. Welcome, <laughs> Hillary. Great to have you with us tonight, Hillary. Yes. Glad to finally be here. Yes. Well, thank you to the Articulate team mm -hmm. that did a marvelous job back then. Help, help things getting done here tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, big time, thanks. I, I do have to ask you, before we get into the real meat of this, a sheep ranch in Montana, really? Yeah, you definitely. Sheep ranch in Montana for a month helped with shearing, and then I helped with lambing. I was there helping, you know, arms in, pulling out sheep. Absolutely. Or lambs. You're pulling out lambs, obviously. Yes, little James Harriet-like. I loved it. It was beautiful. I loved Montana. Like you can see the weather for like three days out. You can say like, hey, two days from now, it's going to like you can. <laughs> well, Montana is great for skiing. That part I know. But yeah, oh, yeah you know, there you go. Yeah. sheep, I'm not too sure about. But you are a pro with this whole voiceover, voice yeah. coaching, voice animation. What's your favorite part of working with the voice? That it reveals your soul. I am amazed by the voice. It's so versatile and it reveals our truth. That's why when we're talking to our friends, we're like, come on, what's really going on? <laughs> right? We totally check in with people who are especially close to us, right? Yeah. So why is the voice so important? I mean, 
I know why, but why do you believe it's so important and why should people care about improving their voice? Because it's the one thing that gets in our way of showing up fully and dynamically, versatile, because it's based on breath. And when our body is trying to protect us, keep us safer, it cuts off our breath, right? So we go fight, flight, freeze, faint, all those. The first thing that goes is our breath. And we hold it far more often than we realize. And in the journey of learning to use our voice, that breath is important and figuring out where we're holding tension and we don't realize it. So that we can really play with it, do really cool voices and do wild screams and tiny things, tiny little voices. And we have this incredible range and mm -hmm. we tend to get socialized into this tiny, tiny section. We're like, this is my voice. No, we got all kinds of things available. So long as we breathe, correctly obviously if we're alive we're breathing correctly so maybe i would say more correctly or with less <laughs> tension yeah intentionality really say, yeah. of that breath and controlling <laughs> the breath because sometimes we do squeeze out words sometimes we get too excited and it just rolls out yeah. of us crazy learning how to control that is a big part of it right yeah and realizing how much tension we have yeah so that's the three things i wanted to share today i really wanted to share about breath about tension and about balancing your stereo so you can show up with the voice you want, Ooh. whether you're recording a book or whether you're doing a podcast. Well, I let's go deeper into the breath. Yeah, yeah tell sorry. me. Yeah, because all, the whole breath thing. Some yeah. people, almost every coach is going to say breathe. Everyone right. that gets on camera, they, they, they tell you back, say, just breathe, relax. But there's more to just breathing when you say breathe. Yeah. Well, I guess in essence, there's nothing really else to it except breathe. And that itself is oddly uh, disorienting for us. <laughs> so all we're doing is we're figuring out how to get the air out here into our lungs and then back out of our lungs through our vocal folds, shaped into cool words and shared out here. The problem is that between here and out here, we're often holding tension and cutting off and for a number of reasons. And that's the area that we need to make sure is free and easy so we can create cool shapes mm -hmm. so that the air passes through and then really cool sounds come out. There is a, there's more to it than that. Well, yeah, but because in they, essence, it's just the flow that we're going for. Well, yeah. a lot of people just speak and breathe through their neck, through, you know, here, through the head. But I've often heard. Yeah. Breathe deep. Go go deep. Use your diaphragm. Don't just speak through the head cavity. Speak from the depth and it adds much more. Yes. Depends whether we want to contradict one of the things that even I taught for a long time. Yeah. Which is we when we talk about breathing from the diaphragm, you you can't and it's not from, it's with, right? It's with just FYI, like all the stuff that I as a voice person. <laughs> have taught. You cannot breathe without your diaphragm unless you're paralyzed. So we don't have any control over our diaphragm. It is creating a vacuum. It drops, air comes in. So once there's a vacuum, nature abhors a vacuum, air floods in and fills up our lungs. And then we actually control the exhale. That's where the intentionality comes from. So when we ask people to take a deep breath, we are putting tension with the intention where we don't need it. <sighs> or we use our mouth and we tend to go high. It's pretty hard to, take, to think to take an inhale and breathe deeply. What's interesting is if you exhale first, just blow out, then the air naturally comes in lower in your lungs. We're designed as a vacuum. Speaking is an exhale. So when we allow our breath to flow and we are at the end of a line and we just let the air back in, it comes in more deeply. For the science-minded folks, and folks are like, yeah, what does it matter? There are more blood vessels at the bottom of our lungs than the top of our lungs. So if you are breathing deeply, more blood vessels means more oxygen getting in the bloodstream, getting to our brain so we can think. And as long as we keep that flow going, even when we're nervous, like keeping that flow going. If our body doesn't think we're breathing well or we're holding our breath, what does it do? Knocks us yeah. out. We pass out. Totally. <laughs> yes. well, our body's like, you are not doing a good job at this. And then it kicks back in and goes, I'm taking over. 
And then, you know, the little kids in choir are singing and they lock their knees. Oh, yeah. They go. <laughs> that's just a, that's just our body saying this isn't working out great. Let's take over and get it back to the flow. So the main thing to think about is that our breath wants to fill in deep in our lungs. And the deeper we have, the deeper the breath. And then it comes through our vocal folds right here in our larynx. It's one of those words that if you say larynx or voice box, you can get away with that. Yeah. You want to make sure people aren't saying larynx. That's just a little tip for folks. So it's yeah. a larynx. <laughs> it's a larynx. And through the larynx, we have the vocal folds that are attached at one end and they vibrate. And they're vibrating a lot. That's why you have to have that strobe camera. If you're getting camera going down to see if you have any problem, they have to do the strobe light because they're vibrating so quickly. Mm. So they're cranking and they create the vibration, which then we form and then we share our voice out here. So power source, sound source, voice. So back to your saying, most of us talk with our heads. Yeah, we do. We go power source, sound source, voice, and it's all right here. Not yeah. only am I pushing from here and kind of breathing shallowly, I'm actually talking to myself too. I'm not even sharing my voice out here. It's all no. tight. So we want it to come out here. You, if you're spitting, you know, things are good. Not great for pandemics, but good for the idea of sharing our voice. Yes, that breath flowing. And there are so many areas where we try to hold back. We try to maneuver our voice, shrink our voice. A number of people talk with the voice here and they're, they're manufacturing it all here, which I could do if this were my voice, totally fine. If that's my, that's the voice I'm using. It's not the freest and most connected voice. I could use that for a character. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I could also lower my voice. I could also speak more deeply. Is, I mean, I, I don't go very low because I'm a small human with short vocal folds, right? So yeah, so I can only go so low, but I could do this. I could speak down here. There's nothing wrong with it, right? I can also go higher. Yeah, all kinds of things I can do. I'm looking generally for that optimal pitch right in the middle. I always think of it like I'm on the jungle gym and I can reach up and I can reach down because I want to be in the middle to be able to play. And I think of it, as that athletic and that fun to be well, playing you, with your voice. Well, you, you mentioned something, too, about that yeah. head voice. Yeah. And I've, I've coached this for years. People do not understand this unless they really think about it. Our head voice is not the sound, the voice, the world hears. So once you oh, start getting coached right. on projection, yes. once you start totally. getting coached on using that deeper voice, going, you know, going deep down, you start listening to the playback of that voice and you're turned off because you're like, that's not the voice. That's not oh. you. And then you're afraid to project because you're not comfortable gotcha. with the voice. But the first thing is you do have to get comfortable listening to the room yes. voice, not your head voice. Yeah. To the breathing and everything else too, don't you? Yes, because we're listening to our voice through bone conduction in our own body. So my voice feels very resonant to me, right? And I know because I do a lot of voiceover and record, I know it's not. So usually it's a little, it's higher than I, than I hear it in my own body. Okay. So when it's through bone conduction, that's what I'm familiar with. And then you hear it recorded and you're like, who is that? It can be quite disorienting and discouraging and like, what? Yeah. That's not my voice. <laughs> yeah. So we want to balance our stereo. So with that breath is one thing, being aware of the tension here. And the other thing that you're pointing to right now with that idea of coaching people to voices is to understand that we need to balance our stereo. So just like in a car, you or wherever you listen to music or in your home, you want the bass. And you might have one of those cars that thumps down the road. I'm, I'm not going to go for that for a voice, but some people have voices that thump down the studio, right? Yeah. But we're looking for that balance so that the bass brings warmth. And that's how I'm talking about it, the bass, right? Yep. And then the treble brings clarity. When we only have bass, it's really hard to understand someone. Yeah, so it's all good. It's all right here. It's this, we call them yes. the rumblers. The problem, I don't like using that word, but the hassle, the what they run into is that rumblers tend to get complimented on their voice a lot. So they reinforce it. They go, oh, yeah, yeah. And then you ask them, can you understand them? And people are like, hmm, not really. So, and yeah, tell me. 
No, uh, that's that's my biggest pet peeve about Jim Nance. Jim Nance has that voice that has that rumble. People love that he can do football, love that he can do golf and everything else. But after a while, his voice sounds the same. Words do send to blend together. And it's that rumble that you're describing. So I'm, I just want to say, if you're trying to pick out an example, if you've ever heard Jim Nance, you get lost in his voice. And it's not always fun. <laughs> right, 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 right. And that's an interesting contradiction of people who have that deep voice is they get complimented for it. When people are only in their higher register, so without the lower. So uh, all I've done is remove the warmth of my bass and I'm just in my trouble. This is the same, this is just as high as my voice was before. Just before I had the bass coming through as well. So you can hear the stereo. So if I'm raising my pitch, I'd go up here. So I'm not raising my pitch. I'm simply removing this and it sounds shriller. And usually high voices, when they get tight and shrill, they get super shrill and people are like, eh. and then you go, can you understand it? Yes. So, so the higher voices alone, shrill, you can understand everything they're saying. The low voice alone without the balance, it's really lovely warmth, hard to understand. Yes. We're looking for the balanced stereo. And if you choose a character who's really low, you have to be aware of making sure that you make it so it's easier to understand. And well, if that's it's what I was just going to ask yeah. you, those higher, shriller voices, pinky in the brain. Voices right. like that. They have that high shrill. And you're totally. like, it's funny as all get out. But please. <laughs> please. Yes. The nanny. There are all kinds of great yeah. people who've. And what's interesting is you can hear them. I mean, it's pinky in the brain is with a high voice. They didn't do pinky in the brain. Right? <laughs> go. They didn't go to the lower voice. So it's that higher shrill thing. Now, yeah. there's a lot more available. We do all kinds of getting people into their bodies and really feeling the resonance and so that they can feel that breath grounding them and they can go super high. We do mm -hmm. all kinds of work because when we're doing characters for animation or for all the characters in the book, we want things that land differently on our listener. Probably you've talked about this, but people who, and I'm not one of these people, this is not my gift, is not the multiple voices, right? I could not do Harry Potter. Those are major gifts. But people who have to remember where voices are, they tend to put them in different parts of their mouth and in their body. Like they'll have someone who's like a shoulder voice and they'll, they, they're being recorded so you can't see them. So you won't see them kind of remembering that, but they'll put voices different places that have different elements, different resonances, different pitch, different cadence, all those terms that we put under prosody, the musicality yeah. of the voice, right? Yeah. So yeah, and so they, you can do fun stuff. The main no. thing is stereo for longevity. So where does that authentic voice conversation uh, come yeah, in? Yeah, 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 because yeah. people are like, just give us your authentic voice. Yeah. Well, okay, thank you, but I don't know what to do with my authentic voice. That's why I have a coach. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, we have a lot of authentic voices. We are multifaceted human beings. So I have a voice that chats with my dog. I have a voice that, you know, some people say, how come people always say, I can tell you're talking to your mom. And I'm like, isn't that great? You talk to your mom differently than you do to your friends. That's a good thing, right? It doesn't mean it's inauthentic. So that's the same with a lot of communication elements that we talk about. You have multiple ways to use your voice that can all be authentic. Of course, we're good at being inauthentic as well. <laughs> we're good at that too. So <laughs> that happens. I so have people tell me, they're like, hey, Rich, you answer your voice with your radio voice. Yeah. I just answer the phone. But instinctively, yeah. because I have a microphone, I switch so, to a hey, different how are performance you? Yeah. voice. And totally. I don't even know I'm doing it, but people do. And sometimes radio voice was an old way of training people to have that kind of rhythm to it. That, and they, what happens is their voice is in front of them. That's how I describe it. Yeah. So their voice is here and then they show up. So when, we're, when we talk about authentic voice, we want to make sure that our voice and us show up at the same time. I know that's all metaphorical and kind of woo-woo bizarre. I am an acting teacher. So every, anytime you put a voice out here, that's when I feel like the inauthenticity, you know, mm. yeah, you're inauthentic. That sounded weird. There we go. I'm a voiceover actor. Don't mind me. <laughs> so another one is when you put a lot of air out front. So rich, it's great. Oh, it's so wonderful to see you. So I call it precious voice, right? 
And sometimes we do precious voice when we want to sound like we care, but we're so tired that we're having a hard time really caring. It takes a lot of energy to be fully present with your breath and your voice all aligned. Though you can show up fully authentic, fully aligned with multiple voices, right? So that inauthentic, inauthentic thing is different from being able to use your voice in multiple ways. Well, when you use your voice as a mask from yourself, yeah, go rich, yeah. yeah. You no, know no, me, no, I can be no, like, no, 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 because, yeah. because you and I both come from the same media age where we remember, we remember Brown Institute. And you knew every voice coming from Brown Institute had to learn how to yeah. do this. And that's yeah. the mask voice. That's the yeah. projective voice. Oh, they intentionally do this. And the top 40 DJ is going to come in now. That yeah, was and burned in everyone's head totally. growing up. And it seems to still be like if you go to an improv show and somebody's going to do a radio announcer, they still go. <laughs> Years <laughs> later. <laughs> we do. So that's when they were saying we need the musicality. And the musicality and the meaning were separate. So the thing about prosody or the music of the voice is you want it to enhance the meaning. So we want to use higher and lower and longer sounds and shorter sounds and all kinds of things going on. This connected to understanding, to connecting with your audience. If you just go up and down and it's not connected to meaning and it's here, you actually can lose your audience pretty quickly. It's also why monotone loses your audience is it's not connected to meaning and it's they're searching to connect with you and you're just on one note, probably one rhythm at the same time. People go there professionally because it feels safer. It is safer, <laughs> by the way. Well, it is safer to be monotone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's where the coaching comes in of learning yeah. how to use this as an instrument. Your voice is the most yep. powerful thing you have as an instrument. Yes. And the storytell, to go soft, to go loud, to be dramatic, yeah. to be learning how to do that as a communicator from a CEO to whatever you are, football coach, learning <laughs> how to storytell through your voice yeah. is really the deal here. Yes. And I feel like being authentic and being real has to do with the breath flowing and being connected body to person, being fully in your body. And I feel like the versatility that we want in order to play different voices and different characters is also connected to that breath flowing and then allowing all the different things we can do with our, our tongue and the shape of our mouth and re- all kinds of things. And the third, so that authentic or real, that versatile. And the third one is important for being aware of strain so that you can have longevity both in your career and in recording. Like some of my fabulous colleagues are recording for four to eight hours a day on books, yeah. right? Yeah. Not usually for voiceovers, not usually for podcasts. We don't usually go for that long time. No. You you have to know how to use your breath and you know how to you have to know to not have tension here unless there's certain characters you're doing. But you have to find where do you hold that tension and release it so that your voice comes from your lungs, through your vocal folds, and then shaped out here. So sound source, I mean, a power source, sound source, voice versus having it all from here, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and that, 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 that whole burnout thing is very important because my many years of sports broadcasting. Yeah. I did every year boys basketball tournament in the state of Minnesota. I was the main radio voice. Yeah. 16 games in four days. Yeah. I had to learn how to not burn it out. And the TV guys next to me said – Quit slamming the Mountain Dew, uh-huh. caffeine constricts. You're trying to pace yourself, kid. And it was the best advice I had, not only learning huh. how to control the voice, but what not to put in my body to damage the voice. Yeah. The, one of the things with caffeine is that it also, you know, it tends to pull. It's a diuretic, right? So pulling yeah. all the fluids for me. They have found that if you're drinking enough of them, it's it tends to be okay. I would say the Mountain Dew was more, I would think, it was more that it cranked you to a level and you were you it caused you to push past yeah. where your energy was. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the other thing, go with you want to go with me here? Yeah, go. Just go. for a moment. So I'm gonna move. All right. <clears throat> Bring it so on. one so one of the things that I work on with people who come from sports and want to be sports announcers is that they have to, um, I'm going to go, which I'm, my camera's backwards for me. Here we go. So they have to, a lot of times it's called the um, ready position in sports. So our knees are bent and we're here. And most everyone 
and I've done this with when I, you know, I coach business people too, right? So I have been with a CEO who is about to go out into a big talk to his people and he's doing all stiff and monotone. I said, dude, what sport did you play? And he goes, I actually played football. And I go, great. What were you? He goes, quarterback. I said, really? He goes, yeah. And I said, we need him. <laughs> so when he got there and he got in his office, right? And he got, and we were doing it. It was during the pandemic. So we were over uh, Zoom. I said, bend your knees get and get in that position like you're going to talk to all of the people on the field, your team. And I said, use the voice because there's no way you're going to use CEO voice. <laughs> and he went, okay, everyone, we need this. And he said, oh my gosh, I'm using my breath. I'm connected. I said, yeah, you just can't walk out like this. So you have to be able to stand up and figure out how to go from here where it all makes sense. When we teach people to scream, we have them lean over like this and scream so it floats up and out, right? And then the trick is then how do we stand up? It's harder to have a balanced, tension-free voice standing than it is when we're in the ready position of being an athlete or a dancer or like... A lot of dancers that I work with, they're taught to hold everything in, right? Yeah. And then they have to sing. And most of them who really make it on Broadway have amazing Teflon vocal folds <laughs> because they are able to have that and still make sound. Some of the folks I work with have to learn to hold it together for the dancing and release this tension so the voice can come out. So when we're working with athletes and musicians and dancers and human beings, the thing is to really realize that in this ready position, we're here, our voice comes up and out. It's an athletic thing. It's like little kids on a playground. So think about, we don't have to coach little kids to have full voices. We don't generally have to coach people on any sports field. The people right. who thrash their voices are the parents and the coaches running up and down the sideline. Because they're like, go, yeah, right, go, yeah. And everybody on the field is fully in their body and breathing and connecting, not just trying to scream from their throat. So we want to think about full body. Yeah. No, no, because that's another one that is like basic one-on-one -on -one coaching for me is even on Zoom calls, even on if you do a virtual keynote, stand yeah. up, stand up, yes, get totally. your full body into it. Just like you were talking about when, when yeah. you went back to sports, Starts yeah. moving, acting. Totally. Same thing. When, when you are yep. doing a keynote on stage, virtual, leverage the body to help your body. voice, to help you breathe and do what you naturally do. The other voice will come. But like you yes. said, if you're stiff, passive, you'll get the stiff and passive voice. And yeah. that really is not going to do the job for you very often. And when you're stiff and passive, you're usually pushing from here. And yes. that voice gets tight and thinner. And the other thing is then like, now I don't know what's going on. So then you push more and then it's like, ah, and then people are either running things together and they're not allowing that micro pause to allow yeah. the air to come back in. So, so many things happen when yeah. we're tense that don't allow our bodies to do what they naturally want to do. Well, and like, I know you do voiceover yeah. work yeah. and most voiceover actors, actresses I've met, talked with, seen in action, they stand up. Because they are yeah. playing the role out. And totally. you're in character. You're doing it. So you're yep. not just doing a voice. You're doing the character, the translate totally. onto the screen that you really are the animated figurine. Yeah. And that pays off big time when you're fully into it. The same thing works for CEOs and executives, right? Yep. Get in their whole body. They got to embody it. Hey, I was going to give an odd little, it's going to be obnoxious for right now. That's okay. Go for it. When you drink water, when you're doing voiceover or a book, be careful of doing this because you're like, oh, I'm dry. Just a moment. And they'll go and they'll swallow. But that's not where the sounds are coming from. They're coming from all in here. So when you sip water, get ready. Because if you get grossed out by these things, get ready. Go like this. Because you want to wet everything. You want to wet your teeth, your gums, all of it. Mm -hmm. Lubricate the whole machine. <laughs> Lubricate the whole machine. <laughs> we tend to swallow and then we're like, why are my lips still sticking to my teeth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's the impact of learning how to optimize this? I mean, most people really are just going through trying to do it and they're doing the best they can. But when they really start to turn this into an instrument and be more aware, yeah. what's the potential return on investment here? Uh, 
uh, so fuck me. You you didn't stump me. Just did you see everything crash? I just had like a brain crash. Everything crashed in my head. So you are better at what you're doing, whether it's speaking, recording a book, whether it's doing a podcast, you're showing up more fully and mm -hmm. you, it's longer lasting. You have a lot more options available to you. You have fewer people going, excuse me, what? <laughs> fewer repeating, fewer <laughs> moments to repeat. And I think that it, if we're using our breath properly, then in an, it connects with posture, everything about using your body physically well is connected to connection, relationship, being present, mm -hmm. sharing more of you. I'm a big fan of sharing your voice in all of its many different permutations. So we have many voices, so allowing that. And I would think business-wise, you're gonna get more work, right? Yeah. You're gonna get, Well, yeah. and, and people don't realize they are listening to your voice, not just listening all to their the answers. Time. They're not just looking at your degree. Right. More and more in the executive space and business space, yeah, they're looking at how you show up. Yep, and your voice is part of your brand, part of yeah. your style, part of the image of the company. Now, yeah. you really have to learn how to do this better and better going forward. And everybody has their own unique voice, so we're not going for this voice, we're not going for that. We're no. finding out what is getting in the way. Most of us have habits that block our voice. And then we get used to not the sound. We get used to how our voice feels in our body. And when we start shifting your voice and freeing your voice, it feels different, not just sounds different. It actually yeah. feels different in your body. And the other thing is that often our voice is related to family members or those that were raised around. So even if we have a favorite uncle who uses his voice in an odd way and we sound like that guy, then we might do those things. And so shifting it, there's a lot of family connection to shifting your voice can be harder than many people realize. It's quite emotional. One, it's connected to your breath. And two, it's connected to your identity. Well, so you had mentioned earlier you are. about yeah. someone knowing that you had talked to a family member. I live with a lifelong yeah. stutter. My mother stutters far worse than I do. Uh, so friends know when I talk to my mom, they're like, did you talk to your mom this week? And I'm like, why? You're stuttering more than usual, dude. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. these family traits you talk about. Yeah. I hadn't even thought. I've not heard that one. Yeah. 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 I've not heard that. And there are amazing voice coaches out there. And I will always put in a plug for VASTA, which is the Voice and Speech Trainers Association, which not everybody realizes even exists. Yeah. They're in colleges and universities. They're, there's, um, there are fabulous people. They're coaching people on movies, television, all kinds of things. And it's an amazing collection of people dedicated to you using your voice really, really well. And they're everywhere. And I just, it's not a well-known organization. And I just think Vasta is awesome. Oh, and then one of my buddies, he works with people on, because they, for the voices for extreme gaming. And he helps people hold onto their voices because... They just discard. When you thrash your voice, you're just discarded. So how can we use our voice? And he's also advocating for them treating them, the voice like it's connected to a human being. So that's important as well. So all of that. So, yeah. There's so, so much to get into this, Hillary. And again, yeah. I just want to also let people know they should learn more about what you and your team do. What exactly? Yeah. That's your website. If you hit on that, click on yeah. that, scan the QR code. What are they going to learn? Well, we are all from the performing arts. And so we use the techniques and the discipline of the performing arts to work with business professionals, teams, leaders, managers, also anyone who's doing public speaking and connecting in that way. We are fascinated by how do you show up authentically in the very scary world of business and corporate, right? Yeah. And we love helping people find the little thing that they can adjust that makes a big deal. Make sure you hit the QR code, check it out, learn more about Hillary Blair and her amazing team. Because as, as you just touched on there, the executive space, as I work with them, I help them build a media empire, learn how to yeah. learn more media savvy skills. The media world is now so intertwined, partly because yeah. of the pandemic, probably because it was already going that way already, but now leveraging media and the camera and the voice, it's part of everyday business now, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And it can be really unnerving if it's not part of your world. 
Absolutely. Yes. Remember that exhale. If you don't remember anything else, remember to exhale instead of focusing on the inhale. <sighs> yeah. And yeah. taking a breath is a real thing, right, Hillary? That's yeah. not a joke. You really do need to yeah. take a breath. Yeah. Yeah. You exhale and allow the air back in. So exhale and allow the air in. Yep. Exhale. And the air is there already. And by the way. Vacuum. Yeah. You just did a TEDx. Has that been released? Is it public for consumption yet? Oh, my TEDx not? has been out for a while. Yes, it's good. Okay. Yep, it's out there. Yes, absolutely. And what, yeah. what's the actual name of that? It is um, the yes and of archetypes. So the idea being stereotypes versus archetypes. I think that, I don't know the exact title. Yes, it's archetypes, the yes and. So saying yes and to the multiple, it's the same thing. They were multifaceted instead of pegging people as one flat element of their being. We are multifaceted, so embracing the multifacetedness of people. Hillary Blair, thanks for taking the time to be with us tonight and rock the stage. You. you rocked it. And extra kudos for the team behind the cameras tonight, making it all possible with all our all technical craziness. They rock. Thank you very much, Hillary. Yes. Hey, that's going to do it for tonight's edition of How to Rock the Stage. Again, every Wednesday night, we are back here, and we do once again want to thank the sponsors of making this all possible. The NSA. Hillary and I are both proud members of the National Speakers Association. They are celebrating 50 years of public speaking, training, coaching, and helping you amplify what you do. They go higher and higher. If you're a public speaker, if you want to learn more about it, learn more about the National Speakers Association and Out of Video Studios. Out of Video Studios is going to now take this show and pull off the audio, and they are going to re-engineer it and put it up for audio podcast streaming. Make sure to learn more about Out of Video. Dot com. We thank them for powering How the Rock the Stage each and every week. We'll be back next week, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. We go live with another amazing guest. And why do we do this every week? We're here to help you shine on camera, shine on stage, to elevate you and your brand authority. Come on back. We're going to teach you more about more media skills and training on How the Rock the Stage. Until then, I'm the Trigger, Rich Bontrager. We'll see you next week on How the Rock the Stage.